Hey, thanks for joining me for today's quick video. I wanted to bring something to your attention. If you've got a power station and uh, you've been thinking about adding solar to it for solar recharging, or maybe you want to add additional solar to maybe what you've already got, uh, well, you know that adding portable solar panels can be pretty pricey. They're definitely more expensive than, say, rigid solar panels. Well, I think I might have a pretty good compromise for you if you're looking for something that doesn't break the bank. And this is a relatively new product line for All Powers. This is their new flexible solar panel series. This is a 100 watt and a 200 watt behind me. And I'll get into the specs in a minute, but they're basically flexible. They can be actually adhered to maybe a curved surface on an RV, um, or they can be used as portable solar panels. Now you obviously don't get like kickstands um, and that sort of thing, but they, they stow very easily. They can slip under a mattress if you're car camping. They, since they're so thin, they can slide back in, the, in a little corner somewhere. They're just very easy to stow. So there's like a, it's like a really nice compromise between a rigid solar panel and a portable solar panel. Now, why wouldn't you just go with a rigid? Well, those are a little harder to stow, but they are less expensive than portable panels. So you're getting a lighter weight, easier to stow option at sort of a rigid solar panel price, which is just about a dollar per watt hour, a dollar per watt of rated output. So in the case of the 100 watt panel, I think it's uh, listed at $110, and I think they've given me a discount code that will give you at least 10% off. And for the uh, 200 watt panel, I think it's right around $220, but uh, again, they've given me a discount code and you can find all that stuff down in the video description below if you wanna go check it out. But let me get into the specs on these panels because that's important to know, and I'll give you a closer look while I'm doing that. All right, so this 100 watt panel has an output voltage, a voltage open circuit, of just a hair over 30 volts, so 30.6 volts. So if you've got a max voltage input on your power station that maxes out at 30 volts, this is probably not a great option for you because you could, under certain circumstances, exceed that max voltage and possibly damage your charge controller in your power station. So you do wanna be uh, careful of that, but as long as your max voltage is above 30 volts, then you should be perfectly fine with this 100 watt solar panel. Now it does have a short circuit current of about 4.58 amps. So just take that in, into consideration. Most power stations have a current cap of somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 amps or more. So you should be fine connecting a couple of these 100 watt panels in parallel if you needed to. And as you can see here, they are using that pebbled ETFE coating, which is super durable, catches light from multiple directions. And these things are super lightweight. The 100 watt one is only 5.29 pounds. Now on the 200 watt, that one weighs in at about nine pounds, so not quite double the weight. And what you have to be aware of on that one is that the voltage open circuit is 38.4 volts. So you'd wanna make sure that your power station can handle at least 40 volts to connect one of these up just so you don't risk uh, burning out your charge controller. And then it does have a short circuit current rating of 6.87 amps. So as long as your power station supports at least seven amps, and most do, uh, you should definitely be able to get everything that this panel can deliver without being capped by the power station's charge controller. All right, we got full sun, and let's see what we're getting out of this 100 watt panel. We are getting 93 watts, so 93% of rated output out of that 100 watt panel. Let's uh, try shading that on the corner. And we get 52 watts, so 54 watts. So just a little under 50%. Kind of curious how that affects if I put a little bit more on there. This is pretty typical. Interesting, Six, 62 watts. I thought I had more shading on there. Okay, 65 watts. Still, that's an excellent output from a 100 watt panel with a tree branch on it. Let's try the 200 watt and see how that does. All right, sun just came back out from behind the clouds and we are getting 172 watts. Again, very good output for a 200 watt panel. Let's see what happens before we go back behind the clouds again if I shade this. So we're at 183 watts. Put a little shading on the corner. And see how we do. We're still at 105 watts. So pretty respectable output from this 200 watt panel. 
I'm gonna keep climbing here. We were at 115 watts there for a second. Yeah, pretty happy with the uh, unobstructed and the obstructed performance of both of these panels. Now both panels do have these integrated metal grommets, which is nice if you do want to tie them down um, so they don't blow away because let's face it, there's a lot of surface area, very lightweight panel. They are prone to being blown away or flipped over by even a relatively light gust of wind. So having these on there to tie those down easy is uh, pretty handy. And they both come with integrated MC4 connectors as standard. So it should be very easy to find an adapter that goes from MC4 to whatever kind of input, solar input connector your power station uses. And if I can remember to do it, I'll put a few links for you to the most common uh, adapter types. All right, so that's a wrap. I told you this was gonna be a short video. So you will find the links, as I said, in the description below if you wanna go check those out. Um, pretty cool product, very flexible, very inexpensive, and yet still quite portable. So definitely worth a look. Hey, if you found anything interesting or helpful at all, please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video. Very much appreciate that. Thanks for joining me for this video. I do hope you'll consider joining me for the next one. Until then, have fun out there.